Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Stephanie. I'm here with Julianne Lee and Billy Hokeman. Tonight, we're going to have a special presentation, Ask Julianne Anything June, except we're going to talk all about fermentation, and we're also going to take your questions at the end. Um, so during this session, we're going to talk about the benefits of fermentation, how fermented foods work in the gut, and we're also going to talk about how these awesome, you can do these awesome formulas at home. Um, we've got a special special giveaway for the attendees. I'll get to that later. Um, and I also wanted to start tonight off. Usually I start with something that you're grateful for, but Julie and I were kind of goofing around before the session and Billy, you don't know about this yet, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes a surprise, right? Um, so fermentation, I'm going to start with a skill testing question. If anyone in the audience knows or on Facebook, let me know in the chat. Um, there's a scientist named Louis Pasteur. And I'm curious to know if anyone here can guess what one of the things he invented was. I'll I know. You, you do? Okay, well. You can't. You can't I'm not going to say it, but okay. I know. <laughs> I mean, clearly, come on. I know. <laughs> it just seemed fitting. Oh, so Courtney. Courtney. Good job, Courtney. Yes, you're correct. So uh, Louis Pasteur, um, the, the last name kind of gives it away. He's best known for inventing the process that bears his name, pasteurization. Good job. Um, pasteurization kills microbes and prevents spoilage in things like beer, milk, and other goods. So tonight, um, Billy, I'm going to proclaim you the fermentation king of the 21st century. You're joining us and you're going you're gonna to talk to us about everything opposite Yes, that, he, that ruined yes. He, like, he ruined milk. He ruined milk. We started this whole thing by going, all the stuff that he's doing and all these like little experiments at home and all that. I said, he's, he's like Louis Pasteur, but the complete and utter opposite. That's a great compliment. Way. I really, I really appreciate that because. And so we were like, who knows about Louis Pasteur? <laughs> That's exactly right. He unfortunately ruined this which is you know milk in its most uh in basic and amazing state but um uh i can't remember who the uh, who the other guy was though um because i feel like there was a guy at the time who was you know arguing for one for the other side of that as well so is that right we'll have um, to look it up i think there yeah i can't remember i can't remember who it was but i do think that there is somebody that i don't i don't remember I wonder if it's the same guy that did the raw milk and no, it wouldn't have been. That was a lot longer. But no, I don't know. Pot I could be wrong. Remember Pottinger that did the yes. raw yeah, milk yeah. hat study? Yeah, that's an amazing uh, that's piece a, of work that he did. Yeah, so. yeah, we can put that in the chat too. People can read about it and all the incredible benefits from, and that was probably the, was that the 50s? Or I think 30s? it was the 30s. 30s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, people have cats that are watching. That's a great thing to look into. Just to, just to just to expand your own uh, you know knowledge and to look at. Hey, why do we go through all this trouble to transition our cats onto um, you know a raw food diet? And that really just goes to show you you know everything that happens generationally to these cats. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And he talks about raw milk too in that. I think mm -hmm. so. And could you repeat that one more time for us in the back? Uh, Pottinger. somebody somebody put it in the chat already i think yeah, it's, oh, it's, Pottinger. Pottinger. there's a book you can buy yeah P -O available at a fine bookstore near you um or <laughs> online somebody said it looks like i'm healing that is true i am still healing i got so just so if you're new to this just because people wonder about this whole thing i am totally lame and got injured playing adult flag football and I have a, I have five screws and a plate in my ring finger. So we're, we're on the mend. I've been, I've been uh, taking my um, jump for joints and um, some freeze dried bone marrow and bone matrix pills. So I think we're on the mend, but just FYI, that's where we're at with the, uh, with the hand. So I know it looks kind of like a hockey mask, but <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit daunting when it's like this it looks like you can just, like, i know it's, it's i don't know what to do but or something. <laughs> one of those things so <laughs> it's good it just is like oh kind of looks like a horror movie if you couldn't see your face it was just sitting there but, um 
okay you guys just, you guys have me like howling over here um okay so tonight can, can we start with the benefits of fermentation why would we want to consume something that's fermented sure um i think i can start that one out so um so fermentation is, you know, in the, well, there's a lot of different types of fermentation, but the fermentation that we're dealing with is not to the extent of like beer or wine or something like that. This is fermentation, which is really just the uh, processing of food through bacteria. So it just really depends. Um, fermentation can be as simple as, you know, the thing we're going to talk about, which is milk fermentation. Um, or something that's a little bit more complicated, but it's really the bacteria that are pre-processing um, the food. So a good example of that, I think this is a great way to sort of um, show, I guess what I'm talking about. So we, we just put out a golden paste supplement that's a raw um, golden paste supplement. So instead of cooking it, we decided to um, ferment it, which means the bacteria are eating the starches and sugars but they're also pre-processing the active ingredients. So it's essentially what happens there is the curcumin is actually pre-processed. Your body can do that, but the bacteria are doing that and they're processing it into the usable metabolites. So it's easier for the body to absorb it and accept it. But then you also get obviously the, the wild probiotics that are in there. You also get extra organic acids. You also get extra vitamins, especially B vitamins. You also get... Um, so there's a lot added to it. So the bacteria are pre-processing it. So basically um, it, everything becomes easier for the body to absorb. Um, it's kind of the breaking down of that. But then also those bacteria, you know, obviously go to work in terms of inside your gut um, and also um, go to work with the food itself. And they have all those amazing byproducts. And that's just kind of like how nature works. So obviously wolves and wild cats eat bacteria from fermentation all the time. Cause you could really argue that, you know, an animal that gets killed and is decaying somewhat is fermentation as well, right? It's kind of like, or, or another good example would be burying bones. That's definitely um, a type of fermentation. So um, for me, you just get a whole different sort of nutrient profile um, from the food. So there's benefits to fresh, obviously, but then there's also benefits to ferment fermentation. And we know that, uh, you know, the, the name of the game, and I, and I know this is true for you as well, Julie is different nutrients, different types of food, different bioavailability. How do we get as many different types of nutrients into our dogs in, in a reasonable sense as possible? Um, and cats and fermentation, you know, does that, which is, um, for me always been very exciting. Yeah, and also the the when you talk about fermentation, especially doing like turmeric, like you were saying, is the with fermentation you get something uh, like a metabolite after that you don't get you don't get from just ingesting it, and definitely don't get it if it's been cooked. So there really is a different there's a there's a whole um, sequence of different bio bioactive uh, metabolites and sort of postbiotics and all that stuff that happens, happens with fermentation. Yeah. Cause in the postbiotics thing, you're getting essentially, because some of that, you know, is processed already, you are getting those metabolites as well. But I do want to also mention that, you know, um, it's also, you're getting, uh, probiotics as well. So it's not just yeah. post. I think there's, I think there is some confusion there sometimes. So fermented foods obviously provide probiotics as well, but also yeah. um, those postbiotics. And so I think we're finding out over time and the other huge benefit to fermentation and especially different types of fermentation, like we're going to talk about yeah. is, um, you know, as many different types of probiotic or is as bacteria in the stomach as possible. So, you know, I know for my own dog, when I build his diet, I do a bunch of different sources of, of not only fermentation, but, you know, different ro rotating through probiotics, um, because we know the more, um, bacteria strains we can get into our dogs, the better in terms of the healthy ones. And also for us as well, we know that it is, there are studies that show that people who live in houses with dogs and cats have more diverse microbiomes than people who don't. And ultimately that's going to be a lot healthier. And also, 
if you have kids or something that really contributes as well. I love when my dog all the time will eat uh, his food and, you know, drink raw milk and then go lick my daughter's face. And that's a nice little <laughs> jolt of uh, probiotics. I'm kind of the, the opposite of, you know, what they would tell you in that, uh, in that sense, yeah, for sure. um, but, but that's, you know, that's one of those things. And that's, that's the, one of the coolest things about this that people don't really think about is you can be healthier. So if you're doing this for your dog and you're, you know, fermenting the milk, like we're going to talk about, you're doing those things. And you're, you know, if you're feeding adored beast products, you're ultimately going to be healthier because you're everyone in your house shares uh, bacteria. It's just the nature yeah. of, of who we are. So do you, um, do you ever, I don't know whether you even saw this, but I did a, um, a thing like on skin disease and stuff. And I was saying that, that I call it sort of cross, cross species, um, a cross species, uh, micro topical microbiome, right? So mm -hmm. with like taking, I would say to people take a cloth and before you jump in the shower, take your towel, rub it under your arms all over the place, and then take that towel and put the towel on your dog's bed. Cause it literally, it will crawl, it will create more diversity in your dog's skin, especially if your dog is, is, um, you know, really yeasty and really has, you know, the, that really needs external, um, bacteria as well as internal. So I, I totally agree with you. I think we're passing, we're passing bacterias and, and microbes constantly that, that, that help us both be healthy. I agree with you a hundred percent with that. Yeah. And, and, and I think the research shows that in human kids too, because we know they have less asthma, less, yeah. you know, allergies, you know, in the same way, you know, I think it's interesting uh, my dog Huckleberry is a third generation raw fed dog. And he's also was lived the first eight weeks of his life on a farm. And mm -hmm. so he was in and out of barns. He was around uh, cows and horses and, you know, other dogs. Yeah. And so, you know, we're not, it's just such a, it, it's really like nerdy and cool for me to think about that because he was inoculated with all of that as well. And then he was, you know, eating raw food. And, and so, um, you know, it's one of the reasons we're, uh, you know, going to take maple to as many different, uh, I I'll tell you a funny thing. There was a, um, the, one of the farmers we buy from here for, for our own family food. Um, he had like a farm day. Um, and it, the main headline was like, bring your kids plenty of healthy dirt for them to play in. And I was like, <laughs> exactly. So it's exactly the same thing. And, um, so if you don't mind, Julie, uh, I would like you to kind of talk about when we, when I first started kind of introducing you to this concept that we're going to talk about, because this, when did this, I think this was like December of last year or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just kind of started to, you know, what drives me is innovation. And I know that's the same thing that drives you as well. Like, how can we do better? How can we constantly yeah. do better? Like, I, I think learning the the basics of diet and what we know is is an amazing thing. But what really drives me is always, okay, let's do better. Let's do better. And so I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, we could take Phytos flora, which we know are microbes from, you know, healthy dogs. And we could make, you know, the world's uh, first dog specific um raw yeah. fermented dairy beverage. Yeah. I, Cause I don't know if you call it yogurt or fermented milk or whatever you call it there, but I was thinking to myself, that would be so interesting. And I wonder how, like, I could, I wonder how that would turn out. So I remember reaching out to you and getting all of the, uh, the probiotics. I remember getting the, have it here, Phytos flora, and it's going to always be like crazy lighting, but um, I, <laughs> I'm the product model. Apparently I'll just, I'll just, I'll just like do this occasionally. I'll be like, just to remind people. So, um, but I remember getting it and I, I basically, you know, one of the things people can do is go to our website and there is, a, if you click on the raw milk section of our website, there is a video that talks about what we're going to talk about, which is, you know, how to ferment it. Um, but I use a yogurt maker, which keeps it below 104 degrees. So, um, you still are in a raw food state. And we just, I remember thinking to myself, number one, we got a really great ferment out of this. 
And number two, it smells exactly like string cheese. That's the first so. thing that you said to me. This is so cool. Like, it, and it, you, didn't you also say it's sort of separated? Like, yes. Yeah, so you all- have you have the you have the minerals um, that are in the with the probiotics as well, and yep. those kind of go to the top of it, and so um, it looks almost like grocery store yogurt with like fruit on the top of it. Um, but it's minerals as well. Um, like in humic acid, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Um, you do get a different ferment with goat's milk, obviously, than you get with cow's milk. Um, it's a little bit thinner, but basically, you know, when you start to do this stuff and you start to ferment, you know, green juju goat's milk with any of these products, you get different, a different sort of rotating cast of all of those probiotics. And And I will also add that, in terms of, you know, goat milk products, just generally, we don't add anything to this. This is just milk. Yeah. So if you're using one that's either A, already fermented, or B, has probiotics added to it, those are going to be the probiotics that proliferate if they're just if there's just probiotics added to it. Or obviously, if it's already fermented, you're going to get that same set. So at Green Juju, we were like, how do we make this accessible to every dog? And how do we make it the best way accessible to every dog and that was to say we can ferment it differently and you can rotate between your probiotics then which is ultimately healthier so we um all we did was take the best milk in the country from farm farms that i personally inspect um and the soil in lancaster is amazing where this is produced and that translates into the forage that these goats eat and they live amazingly ethically lives and we can have goats that you know are milking for like 10 years and so um uh really just happy to not only bring this product to market which is available this week um starting or or definitely next week if not um bring it to market and awesome and always happy to partner with you guys as well on this kind of thing yeah, I th- when when Billy first talked to me about it, I was I was really excited because I feel like it's just like this perfect combination. So I'm always talking about rotating our probiotics, and every one that you used has a specific um, focus on a system of the body as well. So not or not only when you do that are you getting a really super diverse um, um, uh, amount of bacteria and different kinds of bacteria, but you're also focusing on different areas of the body, right? So like the phytos flora with the, with the canine strain <laughs> and the minerals and really, really great for detoxification, right? So what, if you're going through, you know, fall or you're going into um, uh, spring and you're worried about allergies. The gut soothe is, you know, specifically for uh, helping repair the gut lining and soothing mucous membranes of, you know, uh, nasal membranes, bladder membranes, gut membrane, the whole nine yards. And the same with healthy gut with the enzyme, which is really, I think, kind of cool because fermented enzymes aren't something that is is easy to get right so so when you take healthy gut when you took healthy gut and you put healthy gut into it we're actually fermenting digestive enzymes which i would love to even further look at from a research perspective of what 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 is it actually doing for for digestion like as it is it like super powering the digestive process of the of the digestive enzymes in there i i think that would be such such a cool a really cool thing to look at but when you do something like that you can't you're not going to be able to get that in a in a commercialized raw milk because when you when you look at all the things that are in let's say phytos flora when you're looking at larch right? So what are the, what are the, um, the, the postbiotic or the metabolic, um, uh, the metabolites that are coming from large, it already has cancer, cancer fighting agents. So are we, like, are we boosting all of those? And I, and I do think we do because 
when they're taken on their own, they're super beneficial, but it's almost like when you add them to, to your goat's milk and especially goat's milk that is so clean, I, I really do think that you're supercharging, you're supercharging it. You're, 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 you're taking a formula and, and, um, helping every single one of those ingredients to be more bioactive, to, 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 to just really rev, rev them up. Right. Yeah. I, I was so excited when you told me that you were doing that. Cause I, you know, I never thought about that. And I, I love the fact that it's taking all the work that I've done too with formulating and just adding another layer to it. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, and it's interesting too, because I think that, you know, raw milk really fits in with what you guys do in terms of it being, you know, nature's most nutrient diverse food. So it's yeah. just a super cool thing that they discover new things in raw milk every year. We don't even know exactly what everything does in terms of doing it. It contains every digestive enzyme and cofactor basically ever discovered. It contains, yeah. you know, even with the, so if you take, um, if you take our milk and ferment it with, um, let's say love bugs, you're going to get a proliferation of that love bugs, but you're also going to get the two. So just raw milk of it on its own has 200 species of probiotics just in and of itself. Cause it's made to set up the immune system of, of, you know, a baby animal. And yeah. so the other part too, and I think this is where it can be like really synergistic is, you know, 25% of milk is digestible, not by the animal consuming it, but by the bacteria mm. that innately exist, which is obviously not going to be just exclusive to those bacteria. So it'll be exclusive as well in terms of being a prebiotic and setting up in the gut to um, your products as well. When we ferment them with this, I think what we should do now is at least just explain how this works. Yeah, so people can, yeah. you know, so, yeah, for sure. um, so this is the can easiest, I just, someone's yeah. can cats have it. Yes. Yes. Cats. 100% do, cats see, the, the crazy thing is there's this tradition of cats having milk, right? That was all raw milk. And then all of a sudden we pasteurize milk. There's no one has raw milk on board anymore. The dog has joined us. Um, hi buddy. I know. So I want to say, by the way, this is a non sequitur. I'm if you think I'm shiny right now, it's because my, my house is 84 degrees because our air conditioner broke. So that's why I'm shiny. Um, just throwing that out there, but so, so we have this tradition of cats drinking milk and it's, it was an amazing thing for both dogs and cats and farmers do this all the time. But then when we pasteurized milk, we were like, Oh, milk is not good for cats. Well, of course it's not because this is, I mean, dairy that's produced for pasteurization is the opposite of what you're talking about clean dairy right in terms of yeah. pathogen load in terms of the the what happens to milk even if you took like grass-fed organic raw milk and pasteurize it what chemically happens to it it's just very interesting the whey protein yeah. is destroyed it's it's a whole thing but yeah. it's great for cats so some types of fermentation are harder. Um, if you're looking at, for instance, our two new products, Bam's Beets and Lewis Fermented Golden Paste, those are going to be more labor intensive. They're going to, you know, uh, it's, it's longer. Uh, milk fermentation is the easiest thing in, in the world. I mean, it's, and, and, it's, yeah, it's almost sure. like made for it because you have these lactose sugars. Um, and I will also address this because just because I see... Um, this on the internet all the time when people are talking about different types of milk, I want to remind people because what I often see is that they say cow's milk has lactose, goat's milk does not have lactose. Goat's milk does have lactose and just slightly less. So a, a cup of cow's milk will have 12 grams of lactose roughly. Um, a cup of goat's milk will have 11. So it's just like very slightly less, but I don't want lactose to scare people. So um, even if you're drinking regular unfermented milk, Lactose is different when you ferment milk, it becomes something called lactose B, which is more accessible to the body. So it becomes more like sugar, right? That you're, it goes into the bloodstream. Lactose is meant to not only be in a source of energy in milk, but it's also meant to, you know, feed microorganisms that has, you know, multiple uh, uses there. So, um, but in this case, lactose is going to feed 
the bacteria that are in these products. I keep holding up phytosflora. I should be holding up the other ones as well. So it's going to feed the bacteria in these um, products. So it's as simple as this is a quart of green jujus raw goat milk. Um, it's as simple as thawing this out, taking off the lid. I would do this, but I look like a wonky person with this thing on. So um, taking the lid off of this, you take, um, and actually, if you go to that video that we sort of um, plugged here, we have the recommended amounts of all of the Adored Beast products on there. So you take the recommended amount of, um, of the probiotic. So, and you can do more too, if you really want to make sure that it's going to, you know, start to do that. Um, put it in the milk, shake it up, and then leave it on your counter for 24 hours. That's the whole process. That's as easy as it is. I just think that's like the coolest thing. And how, it's, yeah. how easy it is. And it's, you'll be inoculating that milk. And one of the really cool things I think that you can do with this, and this, this, I would like to be interested to hear your opinion on this is um, you could actually take, let's say love bugs is the one that works amazingly for your dog or cat. You can actually take love bugs and not only ferment it into this, so that's putting it into a different medium, but you can use it too to make it doubly as effective in my opinion. So you'll be getting those probiotics in a different medium than they are here. So now you can take it if you're feeding the milk anyway and either double that up or you could take phytosflora and ferment it into the milk and then feed love bugs as well just to increase that diversity of, of uh, bacteria. So I think it's, you know, this is different. Yeah. I, I like challenging the body in a, in, a, in a soft way. Like I don't like challenging the body with like detoxes and, and all of that stuff. I, I think that's really, I've always thought it was way too harsh, especially for animals. But I think it also challenges the body when, when you're giving things in a different way. So mm -hmm. if you're giving something like in a carrier or you're, or you're increasing the, the ferment with the fermentation and the bioavailability and the metabolites and all that, you're giving that. And then all of a sudden you're giving it a different one in powder form it's, it is, it's very different the way, the way the gut responds to it, the way the, the bacteria responds to it, the way everything responds to it. And then, and then again, like you said, shift it up. So the next, the next month put gut soothe in it and, and ferment gut soothe, but then feed phytoflora mm -hmm. so that you're getting the, the minerals like just straight on. I really think that it keeps the because we did do that, right? A long time ago, we, we ate, we, dogs ate, we ate, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say scavenging because I don't mean that, but, but what was available is what everybody ate. And it was really diverse and really different mm -hmm. all the time. So I think it kind of tricks our bodies into, um, working at, at its capacity from a, pr a perspective of intelligence, like, like getting it, getting it interesting and getting things um, uh, processed through the gut in a different way than just the same thing over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly right. And also this is a really diff like, and the funny thing was, this was all born because this is what I do for fun, which is <laughs> no. ridiculous. So I'm like, uh, I, it really is a thing. Like my wife would tell you, like, I just think about nutrition all the time. It's just, it's three things. It's Marvel movies, Green Bay Packers and nutrition. That's the only <laughs> things I think about. Um, don't tell that I, that came out wrong. Don't tell my daughter and wife that that's the, <laughs> that I just, or the dog, but in terms of things that to know things about, but this is a really interesting way too. So if you were, so the problem with a lot of supplements on the market is you don't know the quality, right? You don't know um, if it's just, cause a lot of it's just powders, right? So you could pick up a supplement and be like, oh, this is a, a healthy probiotic, but it's just powder. So do you, how do you really know it works, right? So this yeah. is kind of how you would kind of do that, how you'd figure that out in, in you know, a lab scenario is to put it into a medium to grow it, to see if those cultures yeah. are actually viable. So now you can do that at home. So we know that these products are viable, your products, because I've grown them 
in this medium. So it's like taking it out of the lab and into your house. So now you can, you can test your probiotics out by doing that. And I know this is true because I also did uh, my daughter's toddler probiotic. I did the probiotic that I take every day because I do the same model. I drink yeah. raw milk. I take a probiotic. I eat fermented foods, right? I drink kombucha. These are all contributors to, you know, my gut microbiome. But I, I, I thought that was kind of a cool thing because, you know, it's important. There's like two layers to it. This is a way to verify it. I mean, obviously at the first layer, I think the thing that's very unique about our companies is people can ask us, why do you make these products? Right. And it's yeah. not just a brand. It's not that it's people. It's the people, you know, for me, for us, it's me and Kelly and Marion, the owner who, you know, are dedicated to making whole food products that work because we just trust the body to break down chemicals better than we can break down, yeah. uh, you know, those chemicals, um, or I should say your dog or cat's body. But so, you know, I, I think that kind of bonds us as well, but I, I just thought in, in the nerd realm, that this is a really cool way to test out if your probiotics actually work. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think it's a, I think it's rather than going in and having your limited amount of fermented milk. And again, you don't know the quality of what they're putting in to ferment it. You don't, you, you know, it, it's not as easy to have your own sort of safety controls at home, yeah. right? You know what you're putting in your milk, you know, what you're doing to ferment it. You, you, and you can even buy like when you buy your milk you can choose to um to specialize or or focus in on on even specific things rather than just being generic and just yeah. going and buy the same fermented milk over and over and over again you you can you i, I think i saw something about um, about mast cells on there um mm -hmm. And I can and I can talk about what I was just going to say even further because I think someone asked you, Billy, what what you thought about um, um, mast cells and fermentation. I don't I can't remember. Well, we can look at it when yeah, we start it's to the ask Q questions. Yeah, it's can, in the Q &A. can you touch on fermented foods and histamine? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. pets with mast cell cancer. Well, yes. And I, I did want to say one more thing sort of about what you're talking about with like peace of mind and being able to, you know, kind of do those things. I yeah. think it's very important as like, just, you know, not even speaking as like a person who makes pet food products, but as a pet owner, as a pet parent, um, for my own dog, uh, there was a big turning point for me where, you know, this is just sort of like analogous to what we're talking about. So yeah. with my own dog, he eats his main protein source is whole rabbits with the fur. And so when I was at the facility and I'm watching this, these whole rabbits, that is just a, an actual rabbit, right. That goes into the grinder and they make the food. I'm thinking to myself, not only am I not guessing here, right. I'm not, yeah. you know, having, having, you know, been on teams that formulate products in terms of complete and balanced diets, I'm not, you know, mixing different ratios of items not only is it sort of like I can see that the, everything inside of that rabbit is insulated from the air and you're not getting a lot of air exposure there, but you're getting this like sort of, I, for lack of a better term, like cornucopia of nutrients there. And it's so simple. And that really put my mind at ease where I was like, oh, this makes me feel good innately. And yeah. so that's how I'm going to feed my dog. And so I would say that's true about that. So about the, so you hear, you see this, this is probably the thing that ha that people get the most with um, fermentation. The question that I see pop up or the objection I see the most is with mast cell and histamine and, and that kind of thing. So fermented foods have varying degrees of histamines, right? So if you were to do the, um, so you might see someone who drinks wine and then they get all flushed and whatnot. And, you know, so that, that's going to have a lot more histamines versus something like this, where if I ferment this product with, you know, a 24 hour, uh, you know, on the counter ferment with Phytos or something like that, there's going to be, you know, a variable amount of histamines, but not really that many histamines, but all of that is kind of moot to the, the greater point, which is that histamines that 
you get from food are different than histamines that come from mast cell tumors, right? In terms of what is, it's the analogy that I always give with this is lactic acid. So okay. when you eat things and when you ferment things, you ingest lactic acid, um, which is a very healthy thing. However, when you work out, lactic acid builds up in your muscles and you become sore. Yeah. But it's not, that doesn't mean if you eat fermented foods, your muscles become sore because they're not, ex they're not the same thing. Ingesting them is a totally different thing. So you have your dogs, you, you have a system in your body, which is the MAO system, which gets rid of excess histamines, which works totally fine. Um, and unless you're on what's called an MAOI, and in, in the I stands for inhibitor medication, dogs, people, they really don't have an issue with fermented foods. I would say it would be a very rare type of dog that can't deal with it. And having worked with so many mast cell and just cancer dogs in general over the past, you know, 12 years or so, um, I, I've never really seen those things have a negative effect in terms of fermentation from my perspective. Um, but I mean, if you were really worried about that, you could just do the regular version of this as well. You don't have to ferment it and it would be, you know, a, a, a highly, you know, healthy thing to add to a dog with mast cell um, as well. But I think that, again, that system really helps to, to regulate those histamines in a way where, you know, if my dog was dealing with that, I would be doing fermented stuff all the time. So that's my take on it. Yeah. Julie, yeah. There's, a, there's a question about um, feeding this and like yeasty dogs or, or dogs that are always, that are hot or run hot. Could yeah. there be, uh, can, are there any cons to feeding fermented products to dogs? What about for yeasty dogs? It, well, actually it's even a more natural way to get it. Right. So, so I would say no, you know, with, you know, me with, um, with pro any kind of probiotics in yeast, when I say don't feed too many probiotics to dogs that have yeast, it's because if they're on the yeasty beast protocol, we're trying to, we're, we're actually trying to deal with yeast in a different way. Right. So we're trying to, um, starve the yeast we're trying to use the specific enzymes and caprylic acids and things like that in the in the product to ingest the yeast and the in the enzymes to actually ingest the yeast sort of skeletal system and if we use too many probiotics it doesn't it doesn't enhance the yeast what can actually happen is it kills the yeast too quickly so when you get a, a, a herx reaction like sometimes um, what a Herx reaction is, is if a dog is really, really itchy or a cat or whatever that has yeast and you go in and you feed a whole ton of probiotics and you take them off of all sugars and you're, and you're, you're super focused on killing the yeast. If the yeast dies too quickly, then they get a Herx reaction, which is, um, the toxins that come from the death from the, from the skeletal system or the, or the, the cells that the yeast cells that die that when, when a normal yeast has about 15 toxins, a dead yeast particle or a dead yeast cell or skeletal system can have up to 47 different toxins. And when those toxins are in the body and the dog's trying to detoxify that, it can look exactly like yeast. It can look like the yeast is getting worse. Mm. You take them back to the vets and they're like, oh my gosh, it stinks like yeast. They smell like nachos. We got to get them back on more ketoconazole, which in, in actual fact, it's not more yeast. It's a, it's a Herx reaction. It's a, a reaction because the, the yeast is dying too quickly. So I always recommend trying to start off with something like caprylic acid and, and, and um, Padarco and different things that are going to kill a, a majority of the yeast and then start putting more and more probiotics into the diet so that you then move through it more gently than, than killing them all off and everybody getting like crazy, stupid, itchier. 
So there's nothing wrong with giving fermentation or probiotics to yeasty dogs, other than if there's more yeast than you can than you even think that's there, you can have a fat, you can have a die off, a two, and and it looks like the yeast is getting worse. They get itchier and stinkier and the whole nine yards. So you just go slow and and kill a lot of them. And then it's almost like two modes of ways of attacking them. You go in, you start to starve them and kill them and they start to die. And then you bring the big guns in to do like the huge, like the probiotics and stuff to do huge work. So it's sort of a two-step process, but there's, but there's nothing wrong with, especially if you are already working on the yeast, there's nothing wrong with giving probiotics or fermented foods <clears throat> you just have to be careful that you don't overdo it too quickly. That's all. Yeah, Thank and you. I would I would add to that as well that the um, the in goat's milk specifically. So there there are benefits to different benefits to you know cow versus goat and that kind of thing. And cow is higher mm -hmm. in butter fat, which is the mo the unsung hero of the nutrition world. People look at butter fat and they think it's unhealthy, and I can't believe that. But um, goat's milk is much higher in those medium chain fatty acids that you're talking about. So, uh, yeah. so it's basically, you know, caprylic acid, capric acid, um, and lauric acid, which is going to be, you know, a longer chain, uh, fatty acid, but, um, this can be a great source of medium chain fatty acids, much like, you know, in our blends, we use coconut oil and, you know, in our, in our, uh, fermented golden paste, we use coconut oil. These are, you know, albeit more concentrated um, versions. But a, a lot of those uh, medium chain fatty acids are actually named after goat breeds because they were found here first. And so that's kind of a, a cool thing. And I, I saw in relating to that, I saw someone ask about the fat molecules in goat's milk versus, you know, the size of them versus, you know, cow's milk. So it's often said um, that they are smaller. They're smaller on average. So there are larger fat molecules in goat milk, but they're smaller on average and more accessible um, to the body uh, than cow's milk, uh, just generally. But they are, there are larger and smaller ones. I think that's, a, that's an important distinction to make, but um, that is one of the reasons why it's sort of most, more, I guess, you know, more digestible. But I do think it's also a little bit, it's definitely incorrect because people always say like, Goat's milk is the universal milk. Well, really all raw milk is universal milk because they're all pretty similar. Um, you know, it, whether it's, you know, uh, cow's milk or human, you know, human breast milk, or uh, there's a local farm by me that sells water buffalo milk, like all these different things. Um, they're all pretty similar, but goat's milk um, is actually the most, you know, consumed milk in the world. Um, probably because it's easier to keep goats than anything else. Um, yep. But um, sorry, I went off on a tangent there about water <laughs> buffalo milk somehow. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, and I think there, there was another question about, I didn't know that about goat's milk and like, because we use caprylic acids for, mm -hmm. for yeast, right? So <clears throat> I didn't know that goat's milk had more of that than than. Thank yeah, a majority of the saturated fat is medium chain fatty acids. Oh, so it's cool. it's that's just yeah, it's really a different uh, different well, type. Well, really so. good for dogs and dogs with allergies. Like yeah. it's it, it, it's a it's a bit of a um, a hidden benefit, right? For sure. Because I did, like I said, I didn't even know that. Um, there's a question says I've heard raw milk is not good for all dogs. Is that true? What are if that's true, what are the exceptions? I have a dog who struggles to gain weight and is severely allergic to flea bites. I feed a man. Um, well, uh, raw milk would be not good for all dogs in the same way that any food could be not good for a dog. Yeah. So it, it, there's nothing specifically about raw milk that would you'd say like, here's the red flag for this group of dogs. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen animals live on just raw milk and water for years and actually be by far their best self, right? In terms of whatever um, health issue they were dealing with or whatever that might be. Um, and so I would say it's definitely more accessible um, normally, but every animal is different. 
And so there could be some that, you know, don't, don't drive well with raw milk. It is possible, but I, I can't really think of a group of dogs that are dealing with a specific condition that I wouldn't recommend it for um, just no. generally. No, that's the same with me. If, if there isn't, if there is the, the one-off one that does have a specific allergy to it, then, but what she's also said is that she hasn't noticed any positive changes since she cut out the milk. <clears throat> so, you know, if she's cut out the milk, just because people are telling her that some dogs are allergic to milk and you, and she hasn't seen a difference by cutting it out, I put it back in because it's, I think it's got probably more benefits than, than like my dogs get raw milk every single solitary day. And so does, so do my cats. And I, you know, I, if I, if I don't have it for a while, like if I can't get it or something, I definitely see a change in their coats. Um, uh, Henry starts to have a little bit of like uh, GERD again mm. you know there, there's definite benefits to it that we don't we don't necessarily instantly see so i yeah i wouldn't yeah. I would if, if that was my dog and i didn't see like massively better reactions to the flea bites then i would definitely put put it back put the raw milk back in to it, its diet and i do a lot um, currently, I mean, I, I obviously like change up Huckleberry's diet, you know, and do a lot of different things. But if I'm, if, if I would say like his just base diet, like, uh, where I get the majority of, so basically, you know, the way that I build his diet is to do like a majority of the calories, obviously animal products are nutrient dense, right? So I yeah. do the, the animal products as, as the base of the calories. And then I add on, you know, um, you know, a green juju blend, Bam's beets and, and bone broth and things like that. But 45% of his diet is an egg yolk and then the rest in milk. So he's a 30 pound dog and he gets eight ounces of milk a day because that comes from my experience, knowing that I feel like that's nature's wisdom yep. versus, versus, you know, formulation wisdom in that that's the more raw milk and animal consumes in my ex personal experience over, you know, the last 12 years, the better they, the more healthy I've seen them get. So for me, my dog's only about to be nine months old. And so I'm just preparing his body for the future. And so, yeah, I, I feed a lot of milk, but however much people are comfortable with, um, is good for them. Thank you. I've got a few more questions here. Uh, this one's for Julie, when dogs go hiking in a forest and roll and dig in dirt, are they picking up bacteria they found useful for their microbiome? Yes. I knew that was an easy one for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Beverly also, here is asking availability in Canada. Bev, or, sorry, Billy, can you speak to that? Um, we are not available in Canada yet um, for these new products. We're available in Western Canada for our existing amazing products. We are not available in Canada yet for um, the milk um, or our fermented products, but we're hoping that changes soon. Uh, we, we ship from a different warehouse, so we're trying to you know currently work that out with uh, distribution and that kind of stuff because everything ships from all the fermented the two fermented products and the milk are made here in Pennsylvania. So it's a, it's a bit of a different process there. So hopefully soon we don't, we're not trying to ignore you Canadians up there, <laughs> especially with your Canadian accents like Steph. So <laughs> <laughs> absolute Canadian accent. Um, do I have one? Yes. A 100%, 150%. <laughs> oh, no. There's a, there's a question here. So why don't you have to use the way to ferment the milk. Uh, what, what does that mean? I don't know. What, it, what, what, what does it say exactly? I think, I think she means don't you have the, she's probably thinking that she had to use whey. Oh, you can, or, you can use whey to ferment things. So you can, uh, a lot of people will use whey in fermented vegetables. They'll use whey. So there's several different types of, you know, making whey. Um, a good example of that my daughter was on raw fermented formula for um, the first year of her life. 
and there's more whey in human breast milk. This is just a weird fact to, fact I'm giving you on the side here. There's more whey in human breast milk, so we'd have to add whey. So you can make get whey from yogurt making, raw yogurt making, from raw cheese making. It's a great way to ferment things, but you just don't need to do that. And whey is a it's one of those things that it's just ruined by you know the powdering of it and gonna, stuff. I was like, going to say it's hard to get good whey. Yeah, most people have to make it themselves. Yeah. Luckily, I have a farm I buy it from for like three dollars. Um, you know, and it's amazing. But um, so you don't need to do that. It would be a harder way to. I didn't mean that as a pun. It would be a harder way to do it um, in terms of doing that. So. And I um, think it's. I think it's also more of a of a. You're you you don't know exactly what's in it, meaning like you don't know what its quality is after it's been pasteurized and heated and like what are you actually sure oh it's yeah gonna it's gonna ferment it but are you adding anything to it you definitely or are you so taking away that you definitely don't want to you know in my experience use anything that's uh, pasteurized in that in that method um yeah. but you'll see it here it, interestingly so when you do your ferment and you put your your adored beast probiotics into this court and then you put it in the fridge, it's going to separate. So yeah. you're going to shake it out before you feed it, but it's going to separate. You'll see the curds and the whey in the, in the product itself. So yeah. um, whey is awesome, but you don't need to do that here. Here we're talking about fermenting with these probiotics. It's and, the same concept. It's just a different thing. And someone said, does the temperature in the home matter for the countertop fermentation method? Uh, it you, It'll ferment more if it's like, if for instance, your air conditioning is broken, I don't know anything about that. Um, it will be fermented more because the higher the temperature, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll grow faster. But as long as it's just regular room temperature, like most people I assume are like 68 to 75 degrees in their house. That's great. And the other thing to think about too, is it'll continue in your fridge as well. So as it sits in your fridge, it'll just be a much slower ferment. But it'll be, I've seen data on, you know, the fermentation that continues sort of in the fridge or whatever, but you could do this for 24 hours, but you could also do it for longer. You could leave it on your counter for 48 hours too. And that's totally fine. You'll get more of a, or in the video, we, we um, my favorite way to do it is with the Louvel yogurt maker, which is um, literally exactly the same process, but you're just putting it in this yogurt maker that stays below 104 degrees, but it stays at a constant temperature of, you know, 100 to 104. So you're going to get a better ferment. But I do also want to tell people like, that's a very specific machine. You don't want to put it in like your instant pot or something, because that will heat it way up and the milk won't be, yeah, the, the milk won't be raw anymore. So what you want to do is, um, you know, this yogurt maker that's in the video is a good one, but um, you can kind of do what you want there and then she's someone else is asking can you freeze the fermented milk after you do the fermentation yes well uh sometimes i hear that all the bacteria dies when you freeze it that's obviously not true or else no no raw company would go through a recall <laughs> because all those pathogens would die every time the food is frozen some of them don't make it through but a majority of them do i can tell you this because i've seen data and tested products that are frozen before um both milk and, and other things like that. So definitely you can, you can freeze it from there. So. So someone's saying for me, which is the best adored beast product to do with that? If the dog is itchy in the middle and in the middle of the adored beast relief protocol, um, what would be cool to do is if you bought three, if you were to, if you were to buy three different bottles of the milk of Billy's milk and then when you're remember what Billy was saying about how he really likes to do let's say you're putting Phytos flora in um in the milk and then you would be feeding love bugs or love bugs or or in the in the relief protocol let's say you're doing the um um gut from the from the from the leaky gut protocol you could 
literally continue to do your relief protocol and put the opposite of what the opposite of what you're rotating on with the relief protocol in the in the um, fermented milk. If that makes sense, do you know what I mean, Steph? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I know you said Steph, but I also know what you mean. Yeah. Sorry, I was over on Facebook there. That's um, okay. <laughs> I was over on Facebook. That sounds funny. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. There, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's that long o which i get i'm from wisconsin so i you know i i get that aspect of it but um I, in the same way side note when i was uh trying to convince my mom to uh feed raw at first she he did uh she does feed raw now which is amazing but for a while she was uh feeding kibble and she would always go i do fine with the bag the bag is totally fine <laughs> So I, I, I'm very familiar with the accent. <laughs> um, I think we talked about this a little bit with the with the high histamine. How about hot dogs? Would fermentation be an issue? Um, so I ran this by, um, so when I go to, when I think about, um, I don't know, I always go to the expert, in my opinion, when I think about heating and cooling foods and, and processing. Yeah. So uh, we had this question. So I, I texted Judy Morgan and um, she, so apparently fermentation is yin, which is a cooling process. Okay. Yeah. So this should be great for animals that run warm. Um, and that's the extent of my knowledge because I don't claim to be an expert on all things for sure. Um, but that was really cool for us because we know there's a lot of animals that run. Um, hot. Yes. My dog is the opposite. He is like, let me go under blankets all the time, you know, at night and that kind of stuff. But um, there are, I would say to me, like more dogs run uh, hot than they do run that run cold. I think this is a good, these next two questions are good too. Um, one is, is it is 24 hours necessary for the fermentation to take place? Um, no, it's not, it's not, a, yeah, I mean, yes and no. So you are going to get um, the per fermentation just generally because fermentation is just bacteria multiplying and, you know, pre-processing the food. So a good example of that would be, uh, we have a blend called Bailey's Blend, um, which is a fresh product that ferments itself in the refrigerator, right? And so on average, after eight days, the pH is around four in that product, which would be fermented. But it takes that eight days to get up to it. So it's not as if there's not fermentation happening and all of a sudden eight days, it's, it's fermented. Um, so if you did it for 12 hours, let's say, um, you would still get fermentation there, but you just get more. I would say the 24 hours is usually what we would recommend for getting like the most bang for your buck, or obviously I've mentioned you could do longer if you wanted to, but, um, you will get, I mean, within an hour, you're going to get some fermentation. It's just, you know, how you measure it. And what about this one? How much fermented milk do you, oh wait, hold on. Uh, I lost it here. How, how much do you feed daily? Like, how yeah, do you that's, what, that's what I was going to say. Like how much I can't find. Oh yeah. No, I can't find where that went now. I can't find, what did it, it, how much do you feed, how much, oh, there it is. Yeah, how, do you how much that? fermented milk do you give a pet on a daily basis? So for me, um, and this goes back to how I just look at nutrition and build my dog's diet, milk is a complete food and it's also 20 calories, basically, give or take per ounce. So what I do is, um, I just take my dog gets 300 calories per meal and whether it's his food, whether it's his rabbit, whether it's milk, you know, whether it's, you know, eggs, things that I consider to be complete foods. now within that 300 calories, I can do as much or as little as I want in milk. So, um, I would say we do, we have like, we have a, a dose it, dosing on here, which, you know, for 10 to 20 pounds is two ounces for 20 to 40 pounds is going to be four ounces. I would say that's like what you want to feed for like the lowest amount that will be like, I think really impactful. 
you'll get benefit at whatever level you do, but you can also do more. Like, like I mentioned, I just make up 45% of my dog. So of my dog's calories, you know, in milk essentially. Um, but so the way you want to look at that is it's just a, a whole food and you're, you're not only getting the probiotic fermentation benefit, but you're also getting, you know, every vitamin you're also getting, you know, every, you know, mineral, you're getting all these different aspects of it. So you can just feed as little or as much as you want. There's a, there's a lot of freedom there for figuring out what works best for your animal. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously the more you feed them, Hey, come here, buddy. You can't go upstairs. Sorry. I'm trying to keep my dog down here. (laughs) Come on, buddy. Huckleberry. So, um, I'm sure people don't mind the, uh, so, um, I think he thinks, uh, my wife is upstairs. So, um, lost my train of thought. Oh, so you can do as little or as much as you want, but I would start with, um, you know, for those of you that can get the product, um, we do have a, a feeding recommendation. I know they can't read this, but they do have a feeding recommendation, um, on the back of the thing and just displace those calories. So there's a, there, that's, that's good. Cause then, cause there's other questions about the size of a chihuahua and, and things like that. So you basically just told them, yeah. um, I, there's a, there's a, actually someone that works, uh, that lives in Singapore, Jason, he, he actually has our products. He's our, I think he's our distributor. See, Jason, I don't know anything about the business end, but I know who Jason is. You're paying on, uh, Julie. You're okay, on. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and he has this proposition for you, Billy, that in Singapore, raw milk is illegal or not allowed. Hmm. Would you be able to make freeze-dried raw goat milk and send it to Singapore? Oh, that's an interesting concept. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I can put you guys together. It's, uh, I do have, it, it just, it just kills me when like, you can't have access to something like this. I just, know. just, you know, ha- for me, I live in a state where I literally have like a milkman who comes to tomorrow. He'll, um, they come to my door and deliver whatever I want in terms of doing that. And so like, or buy it on on a store shelf right like yeah and and that's actually a good point to make because all of our milk uh is certified for human consumption in the state of pennsylvania so what that means is all of this milk goes through the testing that's needed for it to go on a grocery store shelf where i live and so that's very important um, just as, as kind of a side note but we definitely take all of people's suggestions at green juju for into consideration whether they happen or not is a different thing but we definitely take that into consideration and we, we for sure. Um, so definitely something to think about. Um, excuse me if this was already asked, what if your dog is allergic to milk and raw milk? Is there an alternative? Did you already say that Billy? Um, no, I, I would say allergies to, well, the first thing I'd ask is how did you, uh, how did, how would that be determined? There's not a lot of good tests for, you know, raw milk allergy versus like pasteurized in in terms of ones I've seen. Um, but if it's a, there would be maybe a small group of animals that are lactose intolerant. And, um, that is actually in the video. That's the third way that we recommend our milk as well, which is, um, so anytime you buy a lactose free, dairy beverage at the store, they're just adding the lactase enzyme, which breaks down lactose. So for us, we looked into a brand called Milk Aid, which you can find. Um, so for that, you just add 10 drops of that to our, um, to a, every pint of milk and leave that in your fridge for 24 hours. And then that would be a hundred percent lactose free um, raw milk. So that would be another thing you can try. Um, but aside from that, there is a possibility that some animals just, it's not going to work. So for that, I would just utilize the adored beast products, how they are, um, and, you know, look into other, um, sources. My favorite two reproductive foods are eggs and milk. So, um, eggs are a great source of basically every nutrient as well. So you can uh, look into that as well. Um, you the green, is all the green juju, this is my question, not theirs. Um, fermented? No. So, oh, so just, 
just the Bailey's blend. Um, and that one, Kelly was so smart. She made a fermented product without even knowing it. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, she just was like, Oh, cabbage is, is an amazingly healthy thing. And, you know, lemon is a, is a great, um, antioxidant detoxifier. And so, you know, but lo and behold, they're inoculators and acidifiers. And yes. so, um, the, the just greens is the original blend. And that one is, um, our green blends are very low in carbs. They're 3% net carbs and it's a great way to feed sort of fresh. So, yeah. um, the other thing where you can combine these products with, um, I can do this with my wonky hand as well and look really cool. So it's funny that you said that Julie about the horror movie, cause in the car earlier today, uh, Emily, my wife said that this looks like Jason's mask from, yeah, that's what I yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, it looks like a horror movie on your head. Same, same as that comment, but, um, so, uh, so another great combination you can do with, uh, these probiotics is we had something, uh, I believe last month called the 17 plant challenge, which is that if you rotate between our two green blends and our golden blend, you get 17 different plants into your dog's diet, which we know that when it comes to feeding probiotics, you want a bigger diversity of plants because you get a bigger diversity of fiber. And yeah. so whether you're doing, you know, fermented raw milk with these probiotics, or you're just feeding these probiotics, rotating between the green juju products will give you those different fiber profiles and ultimately give you your dog a healthier microbiome. So that's kind of a cool way, aside from the milk to combine uh, Adora Beast products with our products as well. Yeah, because somebody was saying, um, can you add Fido's Flora Love Bucks to organic veggies uh, in the same way you would to milk to ferment? But that's why I was saying, like, it would be interesting because the the Oops. to add them to your to your regular green greens, like yes. just the just the the not the fermented one, but the. Yeah, yeah. Or, or even the golden blend, which is going to yeah. have, you know, golden beets and squash. Um, yeah. I did, I did want to get this question because um, yeah. Karen, who, if I'm getting your last name right, is in, um, uh, now I'm going to mess it up. It's Kentucky or somewhere in the South. And Karen, um, okay. you are awesome. So, uh, so the question is, I got to do this right here. Um, unless you purchase from a farm, does the green juju milk, come, oh, Tennessee, I knew it. Um, so it says, does the green juju milk come from farms that are certified as pet food producers? Uh, yes, but also human food producers as well. So there's a different set of testing that comes from that. Um, uh, and it's definitely comes from farms that I've been working with for, you know, a long time. And, um, as mentioned, I do actually inspect the farms as well to, um, um, to make to sure make that sure obviously, that obviously. The, um, the goats are living their best life and that the milk is truly something that I, I would consider myself to have an incredibly high standard for my own dog uh, and how he eats. And I truly make products that, you know, um, are for him as well. So, yeah. And I think um, when Billy was talking about when he did Fido's Flora in his milk, that it did separate, right? So the minerals kind of went to the top and it almost looked like, um, like you said, the yogurts that you buy with the fruit on the top. Yeah. So that's why it's important when you are doing this stuff is to shake it really well before you feed it, just to be sure that everything is mixed up. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly right. Because then you wanna get, it's kind of like, the other thing is goat's milk is kind of naturally homogenized because the fat, sorry, my dog is like trying, trying to play with me currently. So <laughs> yeah, you can see him. He's like, I don't know why it's so hot in here. Can I, can you, okay. So <laughs> I feel bad. It's like, he can't do much. So we've been, you know, he's been kind of bored. Um, so goat's milk is kind of naturally or is naturally homogenized because those fat molecules are generally smaller. So, yeah. but you, also just from a fat perspective, it's like when we get our cow's milk for our family, there's a huge fat layer on top and you want to shake it up because grocery store milk isn't like that. So not only does that going to be the case for the bacteria, but also for just the nutrition in general, I'll give you a little promo of what it looks like to shake a green juju milk. I can make jokes like this cause I'm a dad. So 
<laughs> I'm just throwing that out there that it's okay because I can I tell you the worst dad joke that I ever made really quick no <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway so just real quick we were taking maple to the doctor and um I gave them my insurance card, which you in Canada, you don't know what this experience is. So I gave them my insurance card to be able to, you know, probably pay them a bunch of money still. And um, it said on there 35.55 for a doctor visit. And she's like, so I don't know whether to charge you 35 or 55. And I looked at her and I was like, I think that means that we pay you 35, you pay us 55. <laughs> and I literally got a groan from both my wife and her at the same time. <laughs> so I was like, I have crossed a line into that guy. So, <laughs> um, does does the fermentation cause increased pH, acidic, or alkaline? Um, this is especially for a dog that's prone to stones. Um, it 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 uh, it causes a decrease in pH. So as it ferments, it will get lower and lower. So typically, like fermented vegetables are going to be down around like three between three and four. Mm -hmm. um, typically something like milk, like most foods are like what, like a neutral, like 6.5 or something like that. Um, but that'll reduce as it, as you ferment it. So just take that in whatever direction you need to. So if, if they're oxalates, you have to be careful of it getting too low. And if they're stervites, you want it to get low. Yeah. And if, if, if you, you were like, I can't have it be low at all, you could just feed this regular and it'll be like around uh, that 6.5 and it'll be yeah. fine. But also it's, it's like, you could just basically like, you're not going to drive this thing way down very quickly. It's not like a, it's not like, so for our beets, our, our BAMS beets product, we're fermenting that for seven days uh, at room temperature. So, you know, you're talking about getting it down to like a three pH. If you do this for 24 hours, it's, it's still going to be like around like a five or something. So it's not going to be like terribly, you know, but yeah. there's, that's kind of why we did the regular version. So people could do all different, whatever. Well, I was just going to say that for anyone that's scared about fermenting, you still get the benefits of raw milk, just feeding it with raw milk and then just using the probiotics on its own to get probiotics. Like yeah. you separate them and don't ferment, ferment them. And you're still getting the, the incredible nutrition from the raw milk. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're really, it's not like they, it's not like you have to ferment, um, the milk to feed the milk or to give the adored beast probiotics, but it's just a cool thing when you can do them together. Yeah. And, the, and all the benefits. I think, I think, uh, with fermentation, like it's amazing, but people get kind of like stuck on that point. The thing that makes raw milk most healthy is raw milk, right? It yeah. is, yeah. it is the, it is the way in which it comes. And even if you were to just feed, um, let's say you feed, uh, you know, love bugs and then you do the milk on its own, you're still getting also the, the inoculating with the love bugs, but you're also getting the 200 species from the milk, even when you don't ferment it. So yeah. you're still getting that, you know, different, you know, speciation through, through those. And, you know, there's like sure. hund hundreds of different species right. of bacteria that live in our, in our dogs. And so um, it's cool when we can not only give, like, see the health benefits of probiotics like this, where you can inoculate like a big shot of, you know, this, to yeah. kind of like fix the gut, but also to combine it, even if you're not fermenting it with this to get that speciation, you know, to get multiple species. So now yeah. if you're, if you're feeding one that has, let's say 14 species, right. Is that what love bugs is? And yep. I knew that offhand. I did not read that <laughs> just for the record. Let's say you're, let's say you're, you have 14 species here. Now you have over 214 species. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I think that's kind of cool as well. Yeah. Or the phytos flora that you have this really specific canine species. Yeah, and then, exactly. And then add it with, with, with the, yeah, I just think it's, I, for people that aren't worried about fermentation in any way, shape or form, I think it's a super, super cool way to, to introduce that into your dog's diet for sure. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's kind of, I side note at green juju, 
the mission from the beginning is how do we help all pets, regardless of if they're sen most sensitive all the way up to not sensitive. And yeah. that is the reason why we did the milk the way we did it was because look at all these ways we're talking about feeding it. You can find basically 99.9% .9 of, of dogs, you can find a way to feed our raw milk, you know, to them in a healthy way. We're so similar because with the formulas, I've done the same thing, right? It's like, how do we create the most benefit with the least amount of um, harm, right? Like, like yeah. how do we, how do we how, harm or sort of like supersizing stuff or it, it's, it's about that synergistic process that the, that the, that the body is so brilliant and really knows what to do when you give things in the right combinations, right? It's about, it's about combining the right things to focus on what you want to heal. Yeah, So exactly. I, I, I yeah, I agree completely. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, Anna's worried about, she also likes to feed apple cider vinegar. Is there a risk in doing that while I'm also feeding fermented foods? Can you, can you overdo it? Um, no, not really when it comes from like foods, right? Like I do, I'll add kombucha to my dog's bone broth. I do, you know, fermented dairy, you know, when it comes to this stuff and also, you know, even fermenting, like, let's say using a kefir starter in the milk or whatever it might be. Um, and then also using BAMS beets. So, and also we use apple cider vinegar in our golden blend. Um, which, you know, is another type of fermentation. So, and also too, like, you're obviously not doing a lot of apple cider vinegar. So it's a very small, but effective dose in that case. So for me, it's really hard to overdo uh, foods in their natural state. Yeah. I agree. So. Right. Um, and I want to say for everyone, before we leave that code juju20, if you don't have any pre and probiotics on hand, It'll save you 20% on any of ABAs, Adored Beast Spot Carries, pre and probiotics. And that's just, is that just tonight or how long does that? Uh, we did it until Sunday. We, we okay. brought back your, your code, Billy, and it's good until Sunday, June 5th at midnight. That sounds good. So go and pick up your, um, for all of the, all of you in the States, go pick up your probiotics and start fermenting. And if you do start fermenting, Make sure you take pictures of it. And I was just gonna and, say that. And tag both of us. Yeah. Uh, tag tag adored beast, angry and juju, um, and let us know how it goes because we. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah, my favorite. You know, it's it's such a cool process. I'll say, say as my last thing, that, you know, developing products from the base idea, all the way up to release, and then actually seeing it on the shelves. But then the the, the my favorite part is seeing people use stuff and seeing the better health outcomes that come. It just means yeah. so much to start seeing animals become healthier and seeing them, you know, um, and so I, you know, please, please tag us and, and let us know how those ferments go. Yeah. And I think, you know, when doing stuff, I always, you know, you know, uh, I really am into energy and what you're, what you're doing with your animals. And I think that, just your hands on mixing the mixing the two products creating your own fermentation deciding okay this month i'm gonna do or this these three days i'm doing phytos flora these then it, it's it just makes you become active active in your yeah. animal's health and i think that's the coolest because we're so it's so easy for us to just, just grab stuff in off the shelf and whatever and feed them but this isn't like a massive, you know, 10 day, not 10 day, but all, all, you know, 10 hours or all day or even a four hour thing that you have to cook and make and prepare mm -hmm. and smush around with, right? Like it's so simple to do, but you're actually creating it for your animal. Like yeah. you're, you're personally doing it. And I think that's, I think that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. They, they know when you put a little extra love into the meal, they, they really do. I agree a hundred percent. All right, everyone. We are over time. Um, thank you for joining us at Ask Julie Anything June. Billy, thanks for being our super special guest. 
Julie, thanks always for your time. And perhaps we can collaborate on your next science experiment here together. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Bill. I'll wave, I'll wave with, with this hand, with the weird hand. All right, everybody have a good night. <laughs> okay. Good night. Thanks for nightmares for tonight. <laughs>